Yeah. As a case, where did you get stuck on this problem? Okay, it's this piece. Um, this one. I just can't remember how to do these. Do the 2x squared? Oh, yeah. Do you have an extra packet at home? Uh, we can share. Really? Yeah. Great. Now, so here. Okay. So, where do you get that? I just I can't, I can't remember. Right. Oh, yeah. That would be interesting. Okay. I don't even Yeah, okay. So, uh, We'll draw a quick sketch here, um, 3x plus 4, so that's fine, kind of like that. E to 2x, uh, something like this, okay, and it says yeah. uh, it's bounded between these two functions and the y-axis, um, so this stuff is going to get rotated around the x-axis, <coughs> excuse me. So we get a shape. Something like this uh, on this side, and on this side, we get uh, just you know, it'll come to like a point like that. And so, how are we going to find the volume of this shape? Uh, so, first, we have to obviously, we're going to take uh, an integral from something to something. And so, here comes our first issue. You can't set the two equations. Yeah, you would have to set this equal to this. 3x plus 4 equals e to the 2x, and then solve for x. But yeah, that's a really tricky thing to do. You can take the natural log of both sides, but then over here you just have a natural log with an x in it. I'm sure you would have to take e to the x. Like you wind up kind of flipping back and forth trying to solve for x here. Okay? But just notice we don't see this here. So you use your calculator. Use your calculator. Got a calculator here. What, what's the what's going to be the left side of our integral? What? Zero. Zero. So we want to find this. This is the thing we want to find. Out. We take our calculator. Add up, add up three x plus four. <laughs> and e to the two x. E two x. Right, so we're looking for what now? The intersection, so we can second calculate the intersection of these two things. Uh, enter, enter. Now they do intersect in two places, so you want to move your cursor close to the right intersection, closer to that than to the left one. So 0.9655. Right? Okay, now we have to actually build the integram, the thing we're going to take the integral of. With everything but the shell method, we're going to have a cross section area times dx, or if it's vertical, times dy. Okay, if the if the discs are defined uh, like this, then it's dy. But it's like this. Okay, the thickness of each of these is dx. The the location of any washer is defined by x. So what would the integrand look like? Keep in mind, it always looks like this for discs or washers or known cross sections, all of these are the same. Or maybe for another problem, not this one, the area defined by y times dy. So we're going to do this guy right here. All right, so how do we find the area of any of these washers? Uh, pi r squared. So then what's the, so we got pi times big R squared minus little r squared, because we can factor out that pi. Mm -hmm. so pull that pi outside up there. So what's the big R? 3x plus 4. 3x plus 4. What's the little r? e to the 2x. Squared minus e to the 2x. And this is our x. Squared dx. OK. Uh, can we do this? Uh, probably pull this off by hand, but we got to think speed when they're on the AP test, time test, okay? So if we uh, have our integral set up, and we just need to know essentially the area under this curve, if we're doing a completely new function, then we need to go into the calculator and do just that. 
if we're going to do that, we may want to just put the pi back in there so that the number that we get is, you know, everything is in there. Otherwise, we would take this answer multiplied by pi, and that's just going to be a little bit of a hassle. So we go back in here. Let's clear those out. We're going to put in this new nasty thing. We don't even have to multiply it out. We can just let the calculator take care of all that stuff. Okay, here's pi. This is the greatest. This is the first time we've ever been told that that happened. Squared. Uh, oh, we need, to, we need to put pi on <coughs> everything, so we need another parentheses. Yeah. 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 Plus. Plus. Oh, sorry. Good catch it, Anna. Plus. That's the e to the 4x. I think it's going to be there. E to the 4x. 4. 4. Huh? 4. Why are you saying 4? So we got pi times big R squared minus little r squared. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's got the squared in, in there, part of that. So um, here's our graph. Okay, it's going to look nothing like this one that we have. Because what we want to do is find the, the value of the integral from, from zero, 0 to 0.9655. Okay. So um, we want to calculate number 7 would be the definite integral. Left side is zero. Point nine six point five nine five six is right. one that you tried really hard on and then you got stuck on or let's go to the next packet. What shall it be? What shall it be? Next packet. No way. Yeah. Are this the next packet? I'm no, this packet. This will be the last one for this packet? Yep. Okay, okay no calculator on this one. It has a or B because okay. of dx, not dy, because it's rotated around the inversal. Okay, it's possible to do this uh, with one of these. It's possible. Let's let's take a look at it and see. Uh, I don't know. Does it make any sense? So uh, region enclosed by the graphs y equals x. That's a line that goes through the origin. It's a slope of one. Y equals x squared. It's going to be a parabola like that, so that's going to be this area. Over the interval 0 to 1, that would be where they intersect. Not just because they said 1, because 1 squared is 1. Uh, what is the volume of the solid that results are around the line y equals 2? So y equals 2. Here's 1, here's 2, so our axis of rotation is here. It can't be e. How come? Because it sends to 0, 2. One zero one. Okay. All right. Integral is that yeah that makes sense. Um, okay. If we're gonna if we're gonna integrate on the um, uh, as, as a function of x, then we're gonna go from zero to one because it goes from x is zero to x is one. Same thing it happens to be on the y-axis. We're going to define our rectangles like this horizontally. We'd still go from zero to one because it happens. It just so happens that at x is equal to one, y is equal to one for both of these functions. That's where they intersect. Now, if this would go up to two, then zero to two would make sense for a function divide, defined by y. But since either on the x-axis or the y-axis, we would the, the shape, the region that we're rotating is from zero to one. Yes, you're right about that. So we can eliminate that one. Okay. Uh, Let's really quickly do the way that we would naturally do it, and I think we'd probably try the washer method, right? If you use the shell method, we mean to divide these horizontal uh, disks, or horizontal rectangles that rotate over the we, we like to do 
washers and discs like this, and shells like this as well, and rotate them this way, or rotate discs and washers this way. That's the easiest thing to do. Okay. So let's see. Uh, this looks like pi times big R squared minus little r squared. So let's see if this defines the big radius and this the small radius. Okay. Which means we need some. We need a good imagination. You can't be a good Calc students without good imaginations. And visualization skills. Okay. So there's that, like that. It's going to bubble down just that. Okay. So any given cross section will look something like this. It's like a washer with a really big hole through the middle. Okay. So there's our big R. Right? Or maybe it would be easier to define this big R. They're both the same thing. But this, is, this, actually, this one actually touches the function. So this big R, how do we find that? <laughs> the distance from here to there. Or you just take 2 minus big R. 2 minus what? 2 minus y. Yes, y, but which y? There's two y values. There's two functions. Well, it would be uh, x squared. Oh, yeah, it would be x, x squared 1. It would be x squared, because x squared would actually be below, oh, yeah. to below x. Yeah, yeah, I know the relationship to each other. You should be able to graph y equals x and y equals x squared and know that x squared is smaller than x. Yeah. Oops. For, for 0 to 1. Okay, so this would be 2 minus x squared. Okay, uh, 2 minus x squared. Squared, that seems right, right? you got the big r squared. All right, and how about the little r? That would be from here to here. What's that going to be equal to? 2 minus x. 2 minus x. 2 minus x. Big R squared minus little r squared dx pi 0 to 1. There we go. Let's see. This one, they got them switched. That's not going to work. Uh, and let's not even worry about those ones because A worked. I don't worry about that one. I got FB. FB because. The, the height, the 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 function, I, thought, I thought that one was above it. If we were going to use uh, a function defined by y, then we would be looking at the shell method. Okay, so if, we, if we're using a function divide, uh, defined by y, we're talking about these horizontal rectangles that we would sweep around like this and make shells. This doesn't look like the shell method at all. The shell method, for one, has two pi out here. Mm -hmm. it looks like. 2 pi uh, r times h times the width dy. It's not what that looks like. That looks like big r squared minus little r squared. And that, that would be the washer method for this direction. That doesn't work. Okay. So let's go to particle motion. Do maybe one or two from there. I said 21. 21. Yeah. Well, you win. There's 21. Particle moves along the line. Just Good like call out. Particles are what to do. Uh, oh, it moves along the curve. That's an interesting twist. Okay, so 2x cubed minus 4x plus 1. I don't know exactly what that function looks like, but it looks to be something like that. But I, I could be off on exactly where it is. Like it might be over here, up there, down, I don't know. But it, I know it's this cubic function with a maximum uh, possibility of um, one max and one min. Okay, and a, a point of inflection. So something like that. Uh, what's the rate of change of its y coordinate when the particle crosses the, the y axis if the rate of change of the x coordinate is three centimeters per second? Okay. Uh, so this is particle motion. It also could be considered a related rates problem. Okay, so if you think about uh, I'm gonna try and sketch this out on. But so here, here's the thing: um, this particle is moving along this curve. Okay. You can see that its x, its x coordinate is changing at a constant. So horizontally, if you were to look at it, 
it would be moving left to right at a constant rate. Okay? But to keep that up, like when this thing is steep, its vertical motion is going to be fast or slow? It's going to be fast, really, really fast. Because to move three centimeters would require, like horizontal, it would require to, to start way down here and then be way up here in a horizontal distance of three centimeters. But here, if it moves three, it has to move a little bit vertically to move that same horizontal distance. Okay? So you can see how it's a, a related race problem. That as, it, depending on where it is on the graph, its horizontal is, is the same, but its vertical is going to be different. Sometimes it'll be positive, it'll be moving up. Sometimes it'll be, be moving negative, it'll be moving down. Sometimes it'll be moving fast, sometimes it'll be moving slow. Okay, sometimes it'll stop. Right. So we want to find out how fast is it moving vertically when it crosses the y-axis. Okay. But first we have to figure out what happened. What's the relationship between the change in its x-coordinate and the change in its y-coordinate? Uh, well, we have this equation, y y equals 2x cubed minus 4x plus 1. And what we have here is dx d what? T. Oh, this. OK. Right? It's a horizontal distance. That's d, like x. Yeah. This is dx. And then the t seconds per one second. OK. okay. So, if we take the derivative with respect to t, we'll get dx dt, how fast x is changing with respect to time, compared to dy dt, how fast y is changing with respect to time. Which gets to 6x squared minus 4. 6x, well, okay. <laughs> yes and no. We're taking the derivative with respect to time, not just the derivative with respect to x. Oh. So we're going to treat this as a, as a function of time. dt? dx dt, or like no. x prime. Okay. Minus 4 dx dt plus 0, not 1, 0, equals dy dt. Okay, so what kinds of things do we need to know? We need to know x, we need to know how fast x is changing, and then we can find dy dt. Okay? So when it crosses the y axis, let's see if we can figure all these things out. This is dy dt, this is what we're trying to find. 6 times, sorry, x. Do you know how much x is worth? When is this happening? Where is this happening? 1. What? What's 1? Well, if it was 1, x is 0. x is 0. When we cross the x-axis, x is 0. It's true. We could put x in here and figure out what the y is, and the y would be 1. But I'm asking what's x, and x is 0. Squared. dx dt, what's, what's dx dt worth? Three. 3. It's changing at a rate of 3, positive 3 centimeters per second. Nice. Minus <laughs> 4 times, again, 3 plus 0. So we don't even know, need to know what y is. Okay. But if we did, we didn't have an equation that would tell us what y is. So that gets us negative 12. Oh, that's 8. So this is negative 12. Easy. Because this one goes away, and this is just negative 12. <laughs> wow. All right. Okay. Question four. What? Question four. Yep. Question four. The last one, definitely. All right. So much so so taking up a lot of space. Oh, God. Okay. Let's <laughs> Let's all be very brave. There's nothing scary here. No. It's just a math problem. Count Okay. <laughs> the particles move along the x-axis, so its velocity uh, at time between 0 and 6 is given by the differential function v, this guy right here. So v is telling its uh, velocity. Okay, So this is a velocity function. So at any time, 2, 3, 4 is telling its velocity. Let's talk about its velocity. Uh, how, like in which direction is it moving at time 1? Yeah, like right or left. But right be positive, left be negative. It's moving to the left because the value of the velocity, keep in mind this is a velocity function, 
you don't care about the slope of this function, the y value of this function tells you the velocity. So the, the y value is negative there. So it means its velocity is worth a negative number. A negative velocity is like a left word motion. Okay. Uh, how about at time three? Stop. No stop. It is not moving. It is, so it's been moving backwards. Okay, what, what could you say about the particle at that time down there? Stopping? It's not stopping because it's still negative. Yes, all of these y values are negative. For this entire interval, it's moving to the left. What about right here? What's That's special? Right. That's That's right. Right. That's right. That's right. It's moving its fastest in the negative direction, right here. And then, yes, it starts to slow down, right? Get, close, get its velocity closer to zero. Yeah. So it's moving left slowly, fast, and then it's slowing down again, and then it stops and moves the other direction really fast and then slows down and then stops and then moves in the left direction again. Okay? Moves to the right, then at three seconds it stops, turns around at five seconds, it stops again and then moves in the right direction and or I got that back backwards. It moves to left, three seconds, three seconds stops, goes to the right, at five seconds, it stops again, and then continues to the left. The velocity is zero at time zero. That's pretty obvious. Um, I'm getting lost here. Uh, zero at time zero, three, and five. Just kind of talked about that. The graph has horizontal tangents at one and four. What is it? So what's it doing at one and four? Changing direction. You got it. Uh, that's what it's doing at three and five. Is it it's like its fastest? It's at its fastest, so it has oh. reached the maximum okay. speed in whichever direction it's going. And then it starts slowing down, getting a velocity that's closer to zero after that. Uh, the graph has horizontal tangent to the area of the regions bounded by the t axis, the horizontal axis, and the graph of v, uh, the intervals zero, three, 3, 5, and 5, 6 are 8, 3, and 2, respectively. At time t equals 0, the particle is at x equals negative 2. So that's where it is. That's not its velocity. That's where it is at negative 2. x equals negative 2. Okay. So like when it starts right here, it's at x equals negative 2. This is like how it's actually moving. It's at negative 2. It moves in a negative direction, so it's going even farther that way. It comes back. I don't know if it, it actually comes back to here, or maybe it goes past negative two, like it goes to the right. I don't know. I, I haven't really looked at it that hard yet. And then it moves to the left after five. Uh, for the times from zero to six, find both the time and position of the particle when the particle is farthest to the left. So, at what time is it farthest to the left? Six. Why do you say that? The farthest okay, but don't look. How could I know when I drew, drew that squiggly line that exactly where it is and draw it to scale? No, farthest to the left would be at three. Why do you say that? Because that's when it reaches because it kept going, it kept going to the left, it's going to the left, it's being half, it's going to the left. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's where it most of my stay negative the longest and the most. Okay, but then it also moved to the left yeah. up until six seconds. So maybe did it? Well, because it went, it went, it went right more than it went left again. Like it goes left from zero to three, and then again from five to six. Yes. Yeah. So between three, 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 how do you know? I look inside it like, and it's like looking at it. So the three tells me that's like the area under the. Yes, the three is the area under the curve. The the, the area under this one is eight. The area under this one is two. And I'm normally give you like a antiderivative. Like kind of antiderivative. The area under the curve is the value of the antiderivative from and point A to point B. And that's the antiderivative's position. 
They're in a derivative of the velocity as position, yes? So it's like eight. So what does eight mean? In the context of this problem. Eight means like it went eight to the left. It went eight to the left. And then, then it went three to the right. Three to the right. But it didn't get it before. But it only came back two, two right? Two, yeah. So it didn't even come all the way back to where it was here. So it started where? Eight. And went? Eight to the left. Eight to the left, and it'll never be more left than that. So find both the time and the position of the particle when the particle is furthest to the left, justify your answer. So this in the free response, you have to justify your answer. You can't just write down the answers and say, look it, I got the answer, okay? So let's say, uh, well, how do we start our argument? I mean, let, let's, let's start with the conclusion. What's the conclusion? What, at what time is it furthest to the left? Three. And where is it? Negative. Mm -hmm. 10, yeah, it starts with negative 2, it goes to the left, negative 8, and so it must be at negative 10, okay? So how do we start that argument? How do we convince somebody, how do we explain to somebody that that's our conclusion? Start like, uh, like since, since what? Between, since, before, since the uh, area under the or above the curve. Okay, so 0 to uh, 3, that's how we can say that, of v of t, dt equals Okay, so uh, which means that we move to the left. They'll they'll know like if you write this down, okay. then they'll know that you know that. Okay. All right. So since since this is true, then we know that the since this is true, the particle moved left eight between uh, time zero and time three. Okay. Would it be just at time three or would the zero between zero and three? Between zero and three it made this this it progress. Made, yeah, it, it, it went left eight. Like it got uh, I think it like got to left. Got since to it moves to left eight, uh, and uh, it started at x equals negative 2 at time 0 uh, at time 0 the particle particle is at x equals negative 10 okay it's not exactly how it would word it but be ten, that's, be that's ten, good enough time three. Time three. what uh, at no. t equals what? Give that time zero. Time zero the particle is at blah blah blah. It should be at time three. At t equals zero. The next one. At time three, I see what you're saying. At time three, the particle is at x equals negative ten, and then I'll just get rid of that. Make it bigger, yes sir. Okay. Uh, you can say like, this must be. The most left position since uh, from time three to five. Uh, it's greater. Than well, can you say like? Can you say like the area, the area function is greater than? The, uh, yeah, let's say the function three to five. particle is at x 
equals negative 9. Okay. And we've already stated our conclusion up here, uh, right here. This must be the most left position. Okay. And we stated it at time 3, it's at position x equals negative 10. All right. So that's sound. So we have to go back there and say, well, they concluded that at time 3, it's at negative 10, and at no time other than that would it be farther left. So we're good. Uh, part A. That's part A. For how many oh values gosh. of t between 0 and 6 is the particle at x equals negative 8? Explain your reasoning. Three different times? OK, explain your reasoning. So you need to say something like that. Uh, yeah. Say something like that. Uh, if you get time three, it's at negative ten. Then it has to come back up to negative seven at time five. Uh, and since the position function is continuous, okay, that has to be said by the intermediate value theorem, which means that if a function is continuous and uh, it's at negative 10 at one time and negative 7 at the other time. It has to be a, have to have been at negative 8 at some point between those two, two values. And then the same thing uh, from negative 7 back up to or back to the left at negative 9. It's going to have to have crossed negative 8 again. So three times. When it goes from 0 to negative 10, when it goes from negative 10 up to negative 7, and from negative 7 to negative 9. On the interval, t 2 to 3 is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing. Give you reason. Okay. Now, what's the word it asks about? Speed. speed. And what is another the word that's like speed, but not exactly like speed? Yeah. What's the difference between speed and velocity? Direction. Direction. Does speed have direction? No. No. So, speed just means like whichever direction you're going, your speedometer, if it's increasing, if your speed's increasing, it's going up. Whether I'm going to the left or right, it doesn't matter. My, speed, my, my speedometer needle is going up, then my speed is increasing. Okay. So we talked about this before. If my if I want my speed to be increasing and I'm moving in a positive direction, okay. So my velocity is positive. What do I have? To, what has to be true to say that I'm speeding up as well? Because I could be going in a positive direction and slowing down. Well, you're accept Positive acceleration, positive velocity. If I'm moving this way and I'm going faster in this direction, then my speed is increasing. But if I'm going to the left, if my speed is, if my velocity is negative, and my acceleration is positive. Uh, well, positive means if I'm if I'm going to the left, my velocity is to the left, and I'm, my acceleration is positive, means I, I I'm trying to get myself to go this way. Oh. So I my speed is decreasing. So if my velocity is negative and my acceleration is also negative, that would mean that my speed is increasing. The absolute value of my velocity is, is okay, getting bigger. Okay. Okay. So if we can show that velocity is positive and acceleration is positive, or vice versa, negative and negative, uh, speed, and speed is increasing. So from 2 to 3, 2 to 3, it's a negative. what does it look like to you? The negative velocity, but the acceleration is positive. The acceleration, the slope of the velocity function? Positive, so we're slowing down. Also, when you look at a graph of velocity, okay. if if the values are getting farther away from the horizontal axis, then your speed must be increasing. Right? Getting bigger and bigger speeds. The numbers are getting bigger. Okay, they're getting bigger. Now they're getting smaller, so you're slowing down. Now you're speeding up, and now you're slowing down, and now you're speeding up again. Okay. So uh, we could just say for part C. Since uh, we're all uh, values of t between uh, 2 and 3, v, v of t is negative, v of t is less than 0, and a of t acceleration, or, or we could say v prime, v prime is probably better, is uh, positive. The, that's supposed to be a comma, the speed is what? Decreasing. During what time?
time intervals, if any, is the acceleration of the particle negative? When is the acceleration negative? How can we look at the graph and tell when acceleration is negative? When the slope is going down. The slope is going down because we got, we got position, right? And the derivative of the position or the slope of the position graph is velocity. We got velocity. And the derivative of velocity or the slope of the velocity graph is the acceleration. And the slope of the acceleration is the jerk. Is the jerk, yes. Yeah. The slope of the acceleration is the jerk. So the slope of the velocity function is acceleration. It's negative, 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 zero. Positive, positive slopes all through here. Positive accelerations and negative. So between zero and one and then. Between zero and one. And four to six. Zero and one. Four to six uh, since uh, B prime of T is negative uh, on those intervals. When you get answers on the free response, you have you can't just give the answer. Like I said, you can't just say this. You get one point for this, and probably another point for this. Okay? Usually, these things are divided into one to three points. Okay, and they were points for answers that are correct, reasoning that's correct, and then sometimes things like uh, or you talked about this integral. If you mention the integral, that's a point. If you got the limits correct, that's another point. And stuff like this is oftentimes marked down. If you forget dt, your integrand is, is incomplete. Okay. Now, if that were an easy problem, everyone would take the AP test and not have any trouble with it. Okay? These these problems are challenging. And the truth of it is, on these kinds of questions, uh, the average score kind of low, pretty low, okay? So don't, if you weren't able to work through this perfectly and figure out every bit of it, if you were only able to go through and say, well, I can look at the graph and see where, like what the answer is, maybe my reasoning isn't as good as it could be, you're gonna lose some points, but you're probably about average if you're just going through, like there's the answer, there's the answer, there's the answer, I don't really know how to say it being able to say it that takes it to that next level. If you look at the averages for the AP tests, they're, they would be lower than you would think. Okay. Most people is getting people getting fives on this. The scores are lower than you would think they would be. Okay? Like maybe better than half. Better than fifty percent of that. Okay. It's all graded on a kind of a normal curve. If you did the best out of the people So you need to take the derivative of the velocity function to figure out how fast velocity is, their velocity and volume, how fast the volume is changing. So how do we find dv dt? I think I just said dv dt. And it's with respect to t, right? So we don't have to do like a chain rule. These aren't x's, these are t's. We're taking the derivative with respect to t, so it's all business as usual. So derivative of 2,000? Yeah. Good, derivative yeah. of negative 40 t? Already. Negative 40, derivative of 0.2t squared. Okay. When t is 40 seconds, plug that guy in there and we're good to go. So negative 40 plus 40 seconds times 4. Negative 1.6. 1.6? 16? 16. 16. 16. Yeah, that makes sense. So negative 40 plus 16, <coughs> so 30, 24, negative 24. B. E. Ah, oh, well, that wasn't too bad. Okay, let's do another one real quick. Alpha, 94. If the rate of pi r squared. Alpha. Am I missing something here? I don't know. What's pi r squared usually represent? 
If the rate of pi r squared, so, so the rate that the uh, area of a circle is changing, we can think of that as, uh, increases, so the circle is getting bigger, at three times the rate that 2 pi r increases, what's 2 pi r represent? Circumference. The circumference. So the circumference is increasing and the area is increasing three times faster than that. Um, what is the value of r? So do you find a derivative of both of them? Mm -hmm. you R equals two. set them equal to each other. Well, one's going three times faster than the other. Well, then what we're saying is that oh, yeah, but one is the area is equal to the circumference. Okay. We could set it. Could we set it equal then to like three. 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 three? And the area is equal to like three times the circumference. What if I do three functions? Pi r squared. Yeah, could you do three pi r squared? Equals two pi r. So the range is three pi r squared. Well, we want to make sure that the rates are compared to each other this way. So, uh, rate, because that's a derivative of each one. Okay, so, so that's a derivative. That was a good effort. I would have gotten the first start. Might find the derivative. I would have accepted. Value of r. 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 R dr dt. Okay? Because it's changing with respect to time. What's that? You were the first one. The other one. Derivative of this is two pi dr dt. And the 2 pi r changes our rate three times faster than the other one. So that, this is the rate of change of pi r squared. So when is this equal to three times bigger than this? A lot of times we want to multiply this by 3, but this is 3 times bigger than this is. So if we multiply this by 3, we should get this. Oh, I gotcha. And so that'll be 6 pi. Okay, so 2 pi r uh, dr dt. r equals 3. 6 pi dr dt. And we want to solve for r. So we divide by 2 pi dr dt. So dr dt is going to cancel. Pi is going to cancel. 6 is going to cancel with 2 and leave 3. r equals 3. Oh, I know I did wrong, Scooter. Wow. That thing is um, the thing I did wrong. So let's uh, take five minutes and work on these you know, together or whatever. Here we go. I can't, I can't remember two for the rate of air. So classical scenario with tanks being believed it's air. Uh, I don't know what kind of tanks like this actually exist, but in calculus they always exist. 
collapse of the <laughs> spherical tanks uh, at a rate of two inches to or two cubic inches per minute. In terms of d this d that, what is this? DVDT. It's worth noting in your mind at least that this is DVDT. Uh, at what rate is the radius? What do we call the rate that the radius is changing? dr dt, this is something we want to know, uh, is at what rate? So that's, that's the question. That's what we're looking for. dr dt, what is it? Um, at what rate is the radius of the tank changing when the surface area is 12 inches squared? So we know that the surface area is 12 inches squared. All right, so here's the thing about related rates. It re relates rates. Are you just blown away? Snapchat wow. back there? Oh. Can you put your phone away, please? Okay. okay. Oh. I thought we were actually blown away. I just don't. Uh, so it relates rates to each other. This rate and this rate. Probably we're going to have to try some, find some way to relate them to each other. How is it that we come about rates? that are, when we say related, we mean they're in an equation together with an equal sign between them somehow. How are we going to get these in an equation together? Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, well, well, you can, mm -hmm. you can, uh, how are we going to find DVDT? You can take the difference of all that thing. Of the volume. That's not too crazy. And do you think DRDT is going to wind up in that equation somewhere? Yes. Yeah, yeah. so let's take the volume equation. Volume we equals right four track. thirds yeah. pi we were. bar. We were on the right track. Good, good oh, that's good. I thought you were, when you, when you start talking, I, I wonder if I'm making a mistake. Oh, no. Uh, so you're on the right track. So you want to find, you, you know DVDC, you want to know DRDT. So you got to find a relationship between, like, just kind of be, think about it. It's a simple algebra thing. If they give you DVDT and they want you to find DRDT, then there must be some equation that you can plug DVDT into and solve for DRDT. So four pi r squared. So dvdt equals what you say? Four pi r squared dr dt. Good yes. job. We we, thought, we are. We are. We're. Yep. Okay. So let's plug in dvdt and solve for dr dt, and then obviously see that something bad happens. Two yeah, feel like we, equals this four pi r squared dr dt. Well, I can solve for dr dt if I knew. R. R. Oh, we but you do. can't find R because you know what the surface area is. Twelve uh, equals oh, four pi did. R squared. <laughs> oh. So uh, <laughs> yeah, we did that. Three we did that right over pi equals R squared. So oh, R no, where it is, it is, it is the square root of three over pi. And that's about what? That doesn't even matter. Let's just make it the square root of three over pi. Yay. Plug it right in there. Oh, look at that. That's just going to be. Let me square it. It's going to be three over pi. Yeah. Or we can just go back here, r squared equals 3 over pi, and just replace r squared with 3 over pi. Yeah. 2 equals 4 pi times 3 over pi. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. dr dt. So these cancel out. What are we left with here? We got 12. 12. Divide by 12. 1 6. 1 6. Yay. 1 6 inches per minute. Oh my gosh, oh, we had so many parts of that right. We did, that's excellent. Wow. Definitely going to ace this time. <laughs> <laughs> Please do not get some parts up. Okay. We got a couple parts out of one problem. Acing <laughs> it. Okay, so think about what I said. It's, it's, it's difficult to make this simple thing to do. If I can make it simple, I don't know, I would bottle it and be a billionaire. Millionaire. Thousand. Um, <laughs> uh, but if you have a related rates problem, you're going to relate some rates. You're going to have rates, two rates or more, in an equation together. And you're going to find one of those rates, probably. You're going to find one of those rates. Or maybe they give you both of those rates, and you're going to solve for time, or maybe radius, or something like that. Okay? So you got to think, what are the rates? that they're mm -hmm. referencing. They're referencing DVDT and DRDT. Can I get DVDT and DRDT in an equation together? Yes, I can. There's a, there's a volume equation that has V and R in it, of course. So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to T. 
right? As Logan did beautifully for us earlier. Yes. Not forgetting the DRT, the chain rule there. Uh, you realize, you know, it's, it's a simple algebra problem. I don't know what R is. Oh, but you know what? They gave me that other piece of information. They don't usually give you extraneous pieces of information on the AP test. Um, they, I wish they did AP test in partners. That'd be great. <laughs> You'd have to go through college and partners the whole time. <laughs> the same college and the same classes. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. What if you join? What if you hate that? Ooh. What are going to do? That's tough if they want to go to different school. <laughs> that would be the That's hardest. Like, like just the simple, like watching the show. They're trying to like date people. Like, how do you go on a date? You got third wheel forever. There are <laughs> twins who what are married. Different then? people and have kids. Hey, ooh. Yeah, it's just a different world. It's just a different paradigm. It's like one day I can't smoke my eye. Oh, you're all really nice. 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 Oh, you're all really it's just values of a function at different uh, times, or x's, x values. And then you need to figure out things like the, the value of the definite integral, or <clears throat> like how many people bought tickets between this time and that. And what's really useful for a lot of these table problems is just understanding that uh, original function, derivative, second derivative stuff. And if I have the derivative and I take the antiderivative, I'm talking about the integral and I'm talking about the, the function before that, right? If I take the antiderivative of velocity, I'm talking about uh, position. Right, so let's take a look. This table, using the table of values shown above for the continuous function h of x, which of the following is the approximation of the area under the curve between 1 and 9? So wasn't this the one where we do... Uh, oh, Because yeah. we do the... It was when we came in that one day. Yeah, it's not we do the... I can't it's remember like, what it is. It's the you, first one you don't do two, and the second one you multiply each by two because yeah, you have two. Yeah, you do plus two times. The trapezoidal rule. Yeah. yeah. The trapezoidal rule. If I was a robot, uh, then yes, I would say yes to that, but I'm not a robot. We don't just say, oh, that multiplied by two like, it should be a consequence of formulas that you use. Okay? I was saying the formula. I yeah, was trying to explain to you what we were trying to think of. So let's just graph these points real quick. Okay. Be a little more critical. Are you just trying <laughs> to? I will. Uh, oh, okay, so remind me never say anything again. One, so it just starts at one. It goes to one, two, uh, three, three. Okay, all we know about the it's continuous, and the only thing that we can conclude is that it's just a straight shot from here to there. We don't know anything else between one and three. Wait, I did this wrong. Then we just go from there. Four, five, five, comma three. So it just stays flat there. Uh, 7 comma 4, so it goes up here, uh, and then uh, 9, yes, comma 5, 4, 5, right there, okay. <coughs> so we can break these up to these pieces. So it's going to be very helpful is to realize that this is the definite integral. And if we are talking about a graph of a function, then the definite integral is the area under the curve. We can find the area under this curve. We can find the definite integral. All right. So we could use the trapezoid rule. Um, that would definitely work. We could also say, like, this is a rectangle. I don't need to treat that like a trapezoid. I could treat this like a rectangle and this like a rectangle. Like, if you notice, uh, this goes from 5 to 7 to 9, so this goes up to 2, and this goes from 3 to 4 to 5. So like the slope between these two points is the same, and so this is like a triangle. This is a rectangle, this is a rectangle, this is a rectangle, this is a little triangle. Like if you can find the area of all those pieces, you can do it that way too. And they're just straight shots like that. So like this is 4, this is 2 by 3, so this is 6. This is uh, what four. 4 by 3, so 12. This is a triangle that it has a base of 4 and a height of 2. Right? Base of 4, height of 2, 1 half base times height, 4. Oh, quite show up very well. Whatever. 
two by one. So one. We can add them all together. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm trying to make sure. Yeah, this one. You had a girl. Three eighteen, right here. Oh, yeah. One hundred percent odd, huh? Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you ahead of, this, ahead of time, this is not about, you know, area under the curve, derivatives, all that kind of stuff. Um, well, it is about derivatives, but not in the same way as the last one was. Okay, let's see what it's, what it's asking us to do. Use a table of the values shown. Uh, what is the value of the derivative of f of g of 2? I want to take the derivative of f of g. What's that sound like? Um. Derivative of function in a function. function. Got to use the chain rule. So to take the derivative, we need to take the derivative of f of g of x, and then we'll plug in 2 wherever needed. Okay, so let's just start with that. Derivative of f of g of x. Okay, so what, how does that look? f, f of g of x, and then the function. Prime of g of x, yeah. uh, and then f times f times g, g prime. G prime. G prime. Oh. You're thinking the product. Yeah. It's okay, well, it's good. All right, so the the x that we're talking about here is 2. So we'll plug in 2 into both of these places. So what's g of 2? 3. 3 g of 2. Here's g of 2 is 3. So we're going to need to find f prime of 3 in a second. What's g prime of 2? g prime of three. 2 three. Four. is 4. 4. What's f prime of 3? 5. It's 5. 5 times 4. 20. They're just testing oh, kind of Are they going to catch it? Oh. They're going to catch the chain oh. rule? Oh. I'm going to try to do. Great. Just um, a quick reminder, do you remember what left hand Riemann sums are? Whoa. We talked about it for like oh. 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wait, I wish I remembered that 10 minutes. Do you, do you remember? <laughs> yes, you're, you're yeah. using rectangles, not trapezoids, rectangles. How do you decide what the height of the rectangle is? By the left side of it, by the right oh. side of it, by the middle of it. You're right. That's how you decide how tall the rectangles are. Yes. So um, I'll let you go at this for about 10 minutes and then we'll do one together. Okay. And we'll be done. Yeah. The dream team started at least. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Temperature of water in a tub is modeled by strictly increasing twice the differential function. So it uh, looks like it's getting hotter. Um, where WT is measured in degrees Fahrenheit, it's used in minutes, times zero. Yeah, it's just telling us a bunch of stuff. Let's read the first question. Use the data in the table to estimate W prime of 2, 12. What does it say, 12? You got it there. Uh, use the data in the table to estimate W prime of 12. What does that mean, W prime of 12? It means the what, when, what? Derivative of W. Yeah. And what does the derivative of W mean? How fast? The temperature is changing at 12 seconds. Or minutes, minutes. Show the so computation that led you to your answer using correct units. Interpret the meaning of your answer, the context of the problem. So let's just do the context of the problem one first. W prime of 12 is the rate at which W, or let's say the temperature, temp is changing at 12 minutes. How can we figure out how fast it's changing at 12 minutes? We only know what's happening at 9 minutes and at 15 minutes. So it's just in between. Yep. Like C, 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 C table. C 
see the table? <laughs> That's all right. Okay, well, so, so this is W. If this were the graph of W, something like that, then what, what would tell us how fast W is changing? Uh, the derivative. The derivative, the slope. But we only know things, we only know five points. So one, oh, slope, two, two three, four, five. So we have things like straight lines. Uh, say this is nine and this is 15. We're just gonna need to know what the slope is between those two points. That's gonna be our best guess. How do we find the slope between those two points? Oh, we need to find the vertical change. 67.9 minus 61.8 over 15 minus 9. Where do you get that? Come on, hang it out. What is it? Uh, the bottom number is definitely 6. Wow. <laughs> Let's get like a six. number. You got like a decimal number. I got it. It's Come on, 6.1. 6.1 over 6. 6.1 over 6. What is it? Point one divided by six. One, yeah, point. one point zero one six six seven. One point zero one seven. Let's say. Okay. Okay. Um, so. <laughs> 1.07 zero one seven uh, degrees Fahrenheit per minute. That's what they want to see. They really want to see that. Okay. Use the data to evaluate. The definite interval from 0 to 20 of W prime of T dt. No. Using correct units, interpret the meaning of, uh, of that in the context of this problem. So, so W prime is, well, let's think of W prime kind of like velocity. That's the bell. Get out of here. You want us?